Hey, how's it going? Did I catch cut myself off? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I am going to read you some cards. Look at my signs first, please. Because you never know what I might say. <laughs> gotta gotta pre-excuse myself. <laughs> and also remind myself, try not to say anything that you have to excuse. <laughs> okay, so... Hmm. I'm not. Hold on, I gotta move my candle out of the way. I have like a different situation going on here. Sorry. <clears throat> I hope I didn't blur out too much. I just said I had something else going on, right? I needed the candle right next to me. <laughs> so I, yeah, I pulled two, or actually, oh, I pulled more than two cards. I pulled two cards from both of the decks that I'm going to use, the same ones I always use. Uh, so the first two I pulled were from the Shaman's Dream Oracle deck. I don't really want you to be looking at my refrigerator. <laughs> I don't know why it matters, but it matters. So yes. I uh, pulled two from this deck, the Shaman's Dream Oracle deck. And uh, I pulled number two, Beloved. It's, I, I, I'm sure it's supposed to evoke this, but it always makes me feel a little emotional when I look at this card. Durr. <laughs> and the other one I pulled was number 40. Mindful. Wait, did I show you the first card? Yes, I did. <laughs> it's mindful. And uh, I'm going to show you the cards I pulled from the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. And you know, I'm always just really intending to pull one card because like I'm all ooh, I'm afraid of more than one which is I've already proven to myself over and over that that doesn't end up being any kind of a big deal or deal at all I don't know but um, the first two I went to pull one and there was another one that just was stuck to it or something but they came out together same, same thing happened with the Animal Spirit deck. And <clears throat> so I pulled Panther ooh, and Zebra. And I don't know why my mouth kept wanting to say Weasel. <laughs> I don't even think there's a Weasel card in this. Well, I know there's not. But anyway, <clears throat> these two I pulled from the Animal Spirit uh, deck. And I'm going to just hold off on those and deal with the other cards first. I just wanted to show you. Oh man, I lost my page. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. I thought you were like right next to each other. Sorry, being all weird about stuff being in the right place. Give me a second. Am I going in the wrong direction? I don't think so. Oh my gosh, this is taking longer than I want it to. <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay. Of course, it's the wacky zebra page all being cute. Thinking it's being cute. <laughs> okay, so... Um, can I just talk about my day a little bit before I get started? It was actually a really nice day. Um... You know, I like to go out every day and get some exercise or every day that I can, weather permitting and also my body permitting. <clears throat> Two days ago, I went out and there's a place that I like to go that, where there's like no traffic really. Um, it's certainly not, there's not really traffic here except for the street I live on, there's a lot of uh like big truck traffic like 18 wheeler hauler traffic because there's like an asphalt place at the end of the road and they got to travel down this street and and then you know auto traffic regular car traffic 
just it, it's a road it has all the traffics and um but if once you once i cross the road which is another like at the end of mine there's another main road actually i'm sort of capped by boulevards and um but once i get across there it's like pretty <laughs> there's like one business straight up the road and that's a dispensary <laughs> and then there's a side street that cuts off and there's like a wood milling place it says wood products so I'm not real sure what it is they do but I know that it smells really good like they do something with cedar for sure um, so I yes I know it's a loss of trees that results in that smell but what's done is done <laughs> you know I just go by and it just smells good so I'm not begrudging all that stuff I'm just enjoying the scent and by the way it's the same smell they have when they haven't been cut down and shaved up and whatever so um, and then there's a family of deer well it's weird it's like two does and three fawns and obviously I can't ask them which kid belongs to who but I always wonder where is the male and do they have like a sister wife situation going on I should look that up do deer do that <laughs> are deer polyg polygamous 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 the Guild of Polygamous and <laughs> I'm forgetting our dear polygamous. Anyway, I never see a male. So, and it's not like I'm in a place where there's vast forest area for them to hide in. And not at all. I mean... Where they, where I see them, there's, like I was saying, very little business, very little traffic, but it's changing. I can see it's, my whole city is changing the, I don't want to get into that, but they're messing it up, <laughs> in my opinion. But the point is, is there's little pockets of growth where they can go and sort of disappear, but they're not thick at all. I mean, they're, the places I see them walking through are like the wood business and something else I think that might have to do with the extra vehicle parking for the asphalt place that's around the corner and up the road there's another business I'm not sure what it is uh, but they also have some large truck traffic coming and going but you know it's not like a strip mall at all you know like the deer is just walking around it's their home you know so Anyway, why I have to go into all of that to tell you this? <laughs> well, the deer are why I like to go up there, and sometimes the dispensary. <laughs> but there's a slight incline, and on that tricycle, it's not meant for you. It's meant to be ridden on like a flat surface. It's not meant for you know this kind of thing. It's certainly not mountain biking, so. There's just a slight incline, but I have to pull, and I have the thing with my shoulder that I've talked about a million times. It's, I guess, just not going to go away. It's a fact of life. And uh, the last time I was up there, my back started hurting right away, and <clears throat> that kind of ruins the fun, so I leaned over to stretch my back and I don't know if I pulled it when I was you know making it up that incline or if I pulled it trying to stretch it and make it feel better but for the past two days again I've been so bummed like it was kind of raining but there were occasions where I could have gone out for 40 minutes and gotten it done but every time I got dressed and went to go get on the thing all of the sore spots protested and I was like I'm not going to do it if you're already screaming at me so <laughs> that's where I've been <clears throat> and you need to know that why 
oh, I don't know, it was, wasn't to do with the cards, okay, so, but it was good to see the deer, um, it just made me, it always makes me so happy, they, I've been seeing them for about six months, and they will usually let me get about 50 feet away, but the other day they let me get a little bit closer before they walked away. They didn't run. They were not in a hurry. They're like, if you keep coming closer, we're just going to walk further away. I just wanted uh, to get into this shady spot so I could see the what was going on on my phone so I could take a picture. It was so bright out. It wasn't sunny. It was cloudy. Anyway, um... Why did I start talking about that? Heck if I know. Um. Well. Something else. That uh. I do want to talk about that does have to do with the cards is. <clears throat> well I'll start with the mindful card in that case. You know, it, the, it, the word, the card, <laughs> the card is mindful, but it's two words, mindful, F-U-L, well, I'll show you, but, and the subtitle is group think. So, there is a lot of talk about, like, uh, psyops and things, and it's become like a volleyball kind of because <laughs> I have used it in reference to the Q thing because to me that sounds so obviously what it is. Um, but, you know, then what you say about those people it gets thrown right back at you like, you know, I'm rubber and you're glue or, or you're rubber too. I don't know what, but you know, one side's talking about the other one not thinking critically, and then the other one starts saying the same thing about the other side. It just kind of nullifies each other in a way. But that's kind of become my issue with that whole debate of, like, the Q and the conservative right, and then, like, the left and everybody else <laughs> that they're sort of in contention with. Um... That thing I really don't like to say, but both sides have a mind full of their own stuff, their own legend, their own, you know, lore. <laughs> and it, it changes all the time. It's like the most confusing telephone game in the world. But, um... I would say both sides have all this stuff, all these ideas in their minds, and um, I think it started out on both sides to as a a thing where each was looking at the other and going, "God, you got to wake up to these realities in the world that are happening," and on that level, both sides have it right. There is plenty that. We're just letting happen because we sort of let the world go by and we're just on automatic. Like, yeah, we vote or whatever, but I don't know who is doing, like, a whole lot of diligent work to see, like, who it is you're voting for and what they're about. Like, I think everything has just been sort of, like, fast food. You just go up and you do it and it's real quick and you don't have to think about it a lot, but it's like... <laughs> Because we haven't done that, we got a jumble of all this stuff in all of our heads. Like, everybody's sides regardless. We believe a bunch of stuff, and we have, like, the slogans, and, you know, <clears throat> this stories that we tell ourselves that have maybe have some level, or have had some level of truth in them, to them. I don't know. I mean... It's so hard to just really pin something down as everyone agrees that it's real and true anymore. <laughs> and it definitely has to do with the mind stuffed with all of these things, I feel like. So, I'm going to read from the book. 
Lit. The guidebook. <laughs> Fairy godparents. <laughs> oh, sorry. Fairy godparents. Whatever. You know what I'm saying. Spaz. <laughs> uh, and the card number is number four, which... The first thing that comes to mind to me about four, and I don't even have to look it up because this is just like a fundamental, I don't know, it just it was already there, but it represents to me like a foundation. Four corners represent solidity. Why am I showing you this? <laughs> um, and in a building, a foundation has four corners and it's what ultimately holds everything together like if you don't have a strong foundation whatever you put on top of it is not going to be sturdy like you're not going to be able to trust that it's always going to perform in the way you intend it to it could be subject to some form of weakness and you get the point <clears throat> so uh yeah, <laughs> it's 40, but I'm not going to count the zero, so four. Anyway, uh, mindful, keeping a clear mind, hurtful thoughts, the jumble in everybody's head because we're so determined that I'm right. What you're saying is wrong. You have to listen to me. And... When people are so determined all around, well, you get a situation like we have now where, I, like I was starting to say, maybe it started out in concern, but now everybody's just mad at each other and, you know, concern and com forget compassion, but the concern now is more about, like, pushing down the other person's rights and abilities, or ability, not abilities, rights and um, their ideas, like just making them wrong. <laughs> it's like, we ain't really got to do that. That's not necessary. And so, um, let me continue reading. Uh, the human mind can be so many things, a prison, a latrine, a circus, a temple, a cave, dot, dot, dot. It can be a place of restriction or a place of never-ending expansion. Right now, be careful where you wander in your mind. The quality of your thoughts is key. Why did I think of the Garden of Eden when it was all, be careful of where you wander in your mind? You don't want to go in that grove with a tree of knowledge and eat of the fruit that makes you think you know a bunch of stuff, but it tells you something and then you, you know, your thoughts like spiral off into all this other stuff that maybe is, has little or nothing to do with the original thing, like starting off caring about, you know, each side going, whoa, what's up with them? Are they all right? Like, I see dangerous things happening there. Like, that's not a good thing to do. Or, And then it just went away from concern to, you're not listening to me. It's wrong. You're going to die. It's <laughs> You were here. If you're alive, you would live through it. Continuing. <laughs> the quality of your thoughts is key as you're in a fertile time for full manifestation. And here's my note on that. Be careful of what you bring into being. Like some sort of experiment that, like a Lex Luthor thing that's like a weapon and then it's out of control of everybody, including its creator. So be careful in there. You want to ensure that the seeds you plant will sprout and flourish into the life you seek to grow. Be mindful not to scatter weeds. Word. <laughs> it's easy to be influenced by the others right now too, especially in our digital age. Well, truer words, right? It's hard to protect yourself 
from the energy and the sheer amount of information bombarding you 24 7 if you allow all the fear and uncertainty to pollute your mind and emotions you will fill yourself up with this negativity and then see more of it in the outer world stay out of the gossip and other forms of groupthink for when you cut another person down to their level due to their perceived mistakes or limit them by your envy you activate lack for yourself I have more to say about that <clears throat> in a moment. Imagine your, oh, sorry. So fill yourself with thoughts of plenty. Imagine your universe unfettered by scarcity and alive with abundant hope and goodness. So I just want to add a note there. All of this full mindfuls of stuff that has us at each other's throat kind of and even <laughs> we'll say something like I say we but I don't mean me personally because I'm not doing this particular thing but people will say something like they uh, you know they want you, they're telling you for your own good or like you don't know this is happening and it's bad and you know th th that may be but that's not like the important thing <laughs> you know that's like a bunch of uh, static kind of that you like interference you're picking up because there's all this garbage floating around and it's it's the thing that makes it garbage is emotions and intentions and just the selfishness of I'm right you have to stop talking and listen to me and your thing is not anything that I have to pay attention to, you know, like just kind of discounting each other. We, every time we do that to each other, unless someone can be like the bigger man, so to speak, and just be like, okay, okay, sure, you feel that way, that, that's fine. And just, can you know how much easier things would be if everybody just like gave each other that little of a break? <laughs> like, you can't just disagree and agree to disagree it's got to be a big huge verbal war and some people take it further than that because their emotions are large <laughs> and hard to control because you got to know it's not a good idea to go retaliate on someone or something with like a weapon or something like that like there's laws you can run into and then people get hurt or die it's like oh not great so yeah you might want to like <laughs> get the shop back and blow all the stuff out of the mind so they're not so full uh, <clears throat> Be mindful of what your mind is full of and keep the faith. Good brings more good, love more love, gratitude more things to be grateful for. And so in relation to all of that, because we get our hair and our hearts on fire about stuff, but we neglect to do this like the subtitle on this card which is beloved uh number two uh the subtitle is radical acceptance and like the card like the guidebook just said like to deflect uh, like it to deflect the ill will and sometimes violence that can come from a mind full of fighty stuff <laughs> instead of the uh, the alternative the opposite of lovey stuff or even just you know <laughs> even neutral acceptance would be a ton better <laughs> but I mean if you can maintain the fervor you have to have an idea that you feel so powerful that you have to impose it on other people maybe you can find a more loving yet fiery way to express that <laughs> because you want to hold on to the other people like this it it's occurred to me 
the possibly why the reason <laughs> is that we're so uh, unhappy with each other is because it's just a lot easier to get along when we get along and are liking each other and then we get uh, a head full of stuff that takes us off course and has us caring about the wrong things and yeah I mean it makes it hard to still love and care for those people but we have to because underneath all of the garbage is that person and it's not just them. Whatever we're looking at is a reflection of us. So it's us too, what we're looking at, you know, and that's hard to accept and it's hard to see. It's like a whole mind warp. It's hard to see because it's us. <laughs> it's hard to see us in other people because it's too hard to explain. So I'm not even going to try. Um... <clears throat> And I read what the book says about the Beloved card. The object of affection, radical acceptance, loving what is. Loving what is despite the head full of garbage, both recipient and deliverer. When the Beloved appears, it requires 100% of your heart, body, and soul. Don't try to squeeze the beloved into your schedule. Drop the business and receive the one you have been waiting for. Know that this card comes as a mirror to show you the divine within you and invite your radical acceptance of everything you consider beautiful or ugly in your being. So... It says here, know this card comes as a mirror to
make it possible for them to blend in, uh, I guess from a distance. I would think that if a predator got closer and they could like smell you and stuff, uh, or also just getting closer, you might, as the prey become more visible. Um, I don't know, but <laughs> I think about that and I think of all of the lines in this picture that are going all kinds of crazy ways there's no nothing is blending in here <laughs> but i guess that's so i can focus on this animal uh it does have this rainbow triangle on its head and it is a fire element uh angle angle it's a fire element a animal sorry all the lines are just messing with my brain <laughs> Uh, but I think it connotes a sort of divinity. Connotes, denotes. I think it might be denotes. One of those. I will read from the guidebook. Zebra, eccentric, creative, visionary. Oh, there's vision in there. <laughs> anyway, zebras are the most precious of gems. They are young at heart, well-cultured, and they have an undying curiosity about life. Being in the company of a zebra personality is not only a, a delight, but also opens our minds. Be prepared for their potent magic. It is... Be prepared, dot, dot, dot. Their potent magic is contagious, and you may soon find yourself in a faraway land, expanding your worldview while having a blast. Zebras also like to contribute to the global health, through environmental or volunteer work. This card may be a hint to pack your bags. You know what? I might be going somewhere. I don't have any definitive plan, but you know, <laughs> you never know. Uh, but as far as the environment is concerned, I do want to quickly say something. I want to start this project and I'm having trouble sort of closing or making an other end a reality because it requires people at another location to help people at a, at a single location with water contributions that you I want to set up a system where people that don't live on a reservation in the American Southwest can send a water donation uh, to a location where you, the people sending the water have agreed to procure it and send it for a certain designee at the other end, like a family or a person, just to somebody who needs that water because I, from what I understand, a lot of times, like, there's no city water at the other end of their taps if they some situations could be really rustic or they have to bring in water to put in like their trailers or you know what, whatever it is like they have like a more basic situation than say I do here in my apartment with just everything at my fingertips so um, I'm just putting that out there because I've like had a little bit of trouble getting interest in it so there I'm gonna have more to say about it at another time I just want to get that out there so it, it seems like this reading is about like caring for each other including the, those of us that are basically living the camp life all the time camp abuse where people let you know you're in the way and you don't not intended to have any fun <laughs> terrible camp like the worst fat slash sexual reorientation camp ever. Just camp terrible time. Boo! But it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to allow all of that type of stuff to have us doing all of these things like on the offense when, why? No one's attacking you. <laughs> you know, like if you're hearing and seeing stuff that's offending you, you might want to ask yourself, why is that happening? It's not the other person's fault. We, no one makes us do stuff. No one makes us feel stuff. 
we do that to ourselves. We can respond to stuff that we see in people, but we don't have to react because one is kind of like letting it happen, being all watery and letting stuff flow. And reacting is getting out in the front of it and inserting yourself when it's not really necessary for anybody to do that. Really, like, if you are genuinely altruistic and you want to help things, there's ways, ways to do it other than walking up to people and telling them why you think they're wrong or have something wrong with them. You get the gist. I already said this. <laughs> so... That's what I wanted to say. Thank you and good night.